The entrance had a font. He gave them the water of wisdom to drink. It will be made strong in them and will not be moved. It will raise them up forever. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception and this pre-recorded Mass for Tuesday of Easter week. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have bestowed on us pastoral remedies, Endow your people with heavenly gifts, so that, possessed of perfect freedom, they may rejoice in heaven over what gladdens them now on earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated as we listen to the Word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the Jewish people, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has chosen him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments, and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm, The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him. Upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia. Hallelujah. 
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb weeping. As she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told them. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, once again, good morning. What's interesting about our readings today uh, is that they ask it in a simple question, which is, what are we to do? And we see it responded to both from the Jewish community at the time of Jesus and from Mary Magdalene. But what's interesting is that that question is reminiscent of one of the readings that we had a couple of weeks ago. When we were doing the uh, Bread of Life discourse from the Gospel of John when Jesus said to the disciples, you must, to be saved, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood and several walked away and then Jesus turned to the apostles and said do you want to leave and they said to him where would we go what would we do well here we are again with that question after Jesus ascension into heaven now what do we do well let's take a look we start with the acts of the apostles and I've, as I've said to a lot of you through the years uh, if you want to read the Bible the best thing to do is to start with the Acts of the Apostles because what you will find is people like you and me people like you and me disciples of Jesus Christ uh, spreading the word and with success and with failure and then go on to read the Gospels then read the beautiful epistles of Paul and then go and read the Old Testament so you'll understand exactly what was fulfilled so we have Jesus on the day of Pentecost talking to the Jewish people, our Jewish brothers and sisters. And of course, remember, in the early church, the, word, the liturgy of the word was actually celebrated in the synagogue. And then the early Christians went to the home churches to celebrate the liturgy of the Eucharist. So it's interesting that, Jesus, that Peter is talking to the Jewish people. And he said, he's t reminding them that the one who they, they have crucified, Jesus Christ, is the Lord and Savior that had been promised to them for centuries upon centuries. And what's interesting is that there was a receptive fear. There was not a remorsefulness that was there. And they said, what are we to do, my brothers? And he says, repent and be baptized every one of you. Because what he's talking about is reconciliation and conversion come together. Reconciliation and conversion come together even in our own sacraments here, don't they? That after our baptism, when we go to confession, the sacrament of reconciliation, oftentimes for many people, that's a point of conversion for them. It's the time in which their heart of stone is broken open to the word and the presence of Jesus Christ. So we have this reconciliation and conversion, which first of all leads to forgiveness, right? leads to God forgiving us of our sins, but it also frees up our soul to forgive others and even more importantly to forgive ourselves. Sometimes we can't forgive others until we've forgiven ourselves first. 
So, repent and be baptized, every one of you. And you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that inspires us in what we do every day. Especially in this time now of shelter in place, the pandemic of 2020. Uh, we still should be turning to the Holy Spirit every day to inspire us in terms of what we do for our loved ones. What we do for those that God has placed in our care. And what we do for those we have no one to care for them but to pray for them. So then, our Peter goes on to say that for the promises made to you and to your children and those far off, whoever the Lord our God will call, he will remind them that you are the descendants of the house of David. And it was the covenant that God made with David and his descendants that God would send a redeemer. The redeemer has come. He has risen from the dead. He has ascended into heaven. And now he is yours. Do you just ask for him? Now what's extraordinary about all of this is that, first of all, he says, do this and you'll be saved from this corrupt civilization, this corrupt generation. Well, we have a corrupt generation today, don't we? And that's why our turning to the sacraments, reconciliation, which is still happening uh, in many, many churches, spiritual communion, which is available every day with every prayer, this act of spiritual communion that you pray, uh, because that will help, help deliver you from the corrupt, genera uh, the corrupt generation that surrounds us. But then we see something fascinating. We see the way in which the gift of the Holy Spirit of Pentecost worked for Peter. Peter, the one who gave the great profession of faith to Jesus at one point. You are Jesus, the Son of God, the living Son of God. The Peter who denied him three times last week. The Peter now whose words led to the conversion of 3,000 people in one day. Peter was the one upon whom Jesus would build his church. Peter is the rock, and he is the one now who is inspired to lead the church. Why? Because Jesus never gave up on him, even when he failed. Even when he didn't understand what Jesus was telling him. Because he knew that even though Peter's mind may have left him every once in a while, Peter's heart never left the heart of Jesus. And we see this beautiful success now. So we have the, the Jewish people of Jesus' time saying, what do we do? And Jesus is saying to Peter, come to me. When we get to the gospel, Mary Magdalene essentially is asking, what do I do? And what's interesting is that she, as we've heard in some of our other readings the last couple of weeks, is looking for the living among the dead. The problem is that she doesn't realize that Jesus is living. The risen Christ is alive for all eternity. So she's looking for the dead Jesus. And what's interesting is we now have Jesus in his glorified body. She doesn't recognize him. She thinks he's a gardener. But isn't that fascinating? Because she thinks he's a gardener. And what does a gardener do? A garden tends plants so that they can grow and so they can flourish. And so Jesus is there to help her grow and to help her flourish by revealing himself to her. And he says that beautiful thing that beautiful, simple word to Mary. And she recognizes who, she, who he is. Rabboni. And of course then her heart is filled with joy. And he's saying, save your joy. I'm going to be with you now and for eternity. So let me go to my father, to your father, to complete my mission here on earth. And you go tell everybody else what's happening. You be my witness. Isn't that extraordinary? He picked one of the holy women, one of the women who was possessed by seven demons, who had this conversion in her heart that we hear Peter talking about in the first reading, and now she's the one announcing to the world the risen Jesus Christ. What a great thing. So what do you and I do? What do you and I do? What are we to do? Here we are now in Easter week joy of the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus is risen. He's risen indeed. What do we do now? We look for the risen Jesus. And where do we find him? We find him in the people, the events, and the circumstances of our life. Jesus passes through our life 24-7. Jesus is constantly passing by in St. Jose Maria, Escrivá, Ultimorum. And 
And as a result, that Jesus may be in a text message or an email that we receive. Jesus may be in an act of, of charity that you might do during these times in giving food or money uh, to the food banks, to the food pantries, being a volunteer, okay, uh, in, uh, to those that are ministering to the homeless who have an exemption from the shelter-in-place rules. Or it might be the circumstances, and, and it might be the circumstances now where someone close to you has been called home because of coronavirus. Someone close to you may be sick because of coronavirus. Someone close to you or as yourself may be a caregiver to someone with coronavirus. But in all of that, we serve and we respond in the name of the Jesus, risen Jesus. And he will comfort you. And why is that? Because the first place always to find Jesus is in the suffering. Why is that? Because Jesus suffered for us. That's what last week was all about. It was not, not the triumph of Palm Sunday, and it wasn't the humility of the Last Supper. It was the cross of Good Friday, his passion and death. Jesus suffered. And so whenever we suffer, however it is physically, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, or even financially, we unite that suffering with his. He'll cover it with the mantle of his precious blood. He will give it to his heavenly Father and return to us the grace that we need to endure that cross that we're carrying. So never think that there is an empty answer to where do I go? Because the answer is to go to the risen Lord. May God bless you. Please stand. Heavenly Father, we offer you all our prayers and our petitions as we pray. For our Holy Father, for the cardinals, the bishops, the priests, the deacons, the seminarians, the consecrated religious, and those contemplating their religious life. For them we pray to the Lord. For our government leaders, for civil servants, and for the military, we pray to the Lord. For our individual communities, our families, our extended families, our friends, our classrooms, our workplaces, and the communities in which we live. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. For those who have asked us to pray for them, for those who have no one to pray for them, and for the poor souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, we pray to the Lord. And we remember in a special way those who are sick in our cathedral and St. Elizabeth family. Karen Gar, Nancy Clark, Jerry Pretty, Bill Johns, Mucus Brown, Peter Chavez. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, we pray to the Lord. And again, we remember in a special way the repose of the soul of White Carly, who was called home from the virus, and for his family to give them comfort at this time. For them, we pray to the Lord. And in the spirit of the Holy Father's plenary indulgence, we pray for all of those affected by the coronavirus around the world, those who have been called home, those who are suffering, those who serve, those who care, those who pray. For all of them, we pray to the Lord. For refugees and for immigrants, we pray to the Lord. And for those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer you all our prayers and our petitions to act upon according to your providential will. We offer all of them to you through Christ our Lord. Please be seated as we prepare our gifts and we prepare the altar.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of working in the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and 
filled with his Holy Spirit, they become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Paul II, St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, St. Teresa of Calcutta, St. Elizabeth of Hungary, St. Anthony of Padua, and St. Francis of Assisi, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, with Samuel, our Bishop, and Jorge as assistant bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained from your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you've summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you in their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Land of, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon, if you have risen with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Mind the things that are above. Hallelujah.
Please stand. Let us pray. Hear us, Almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness through Christ our Lord. My sisters and brothers, just a couple of things that I want to mention to you. First of all, um, as you can see, uh, we continue to provide our liturgies and parallel liturgies every day here at the Cathedral Basilica. We continue to manage the square block of downtown Denver that we have of uh, both the grounds of the church, the rectory, and our commercial property. Uh, we continue our outreach every day here and at our mission church, St. Elizabeth of Hungary, on the Auraria Higher Education Campus, serving over 350 people a day between breakfast sandwiches in the morning, soup and sandwich line, uh, a pantry, grocery pantry in the afternoon, uh, at, uh, at one o'clock, and snacks in the afternoon. Uh, and so we, we ask your help to continue to help us to provide those services. We're grateful for the volunteers who are donating food for the sandwich lines and for the soup and sandwich. And we're grateful for the volunteers who help to care as well. As of Easter Sunday, our shortfall here since shelter in place at the Cathedral Basilica is over $28,000. With St. Elizabeth through Palm Sunday, it's $3,200. So anything that you can do to help us to continue uh, the services we provide, covering most of half of downtown Denver, we would greatly appreciate. And so will those who both hear us and see us your generosity. Please stand. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you, for, de defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ and help exalt and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you 